next in the next lecture is by Professor Grass, Thoracoscopic Assisted Edition under the Thoracolabor Lectures, Indications, Technique, Force and Complications. Please be Good morning. On my side. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe what I'm talking about is a bit uh, the double what, what was talked about, what was uh, said by Jari Chris, but nevertheless, it sometimes it's, it's better to hear it twice to get it really in mind. Uh, we have some problems in diagnostic in the upper cervical spine. We don't see very good high, high uh, uh, upper uh, cervical trauma. Maybe it's really difficult to see uh, condyle fracture or uh, 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 ring fracture of the atlas without a CT scan. And the second point is we have a high rate of non-union in treatment of dense axis fracture type 2. Therefore, we change in this for the second point, we change a bit our concept. <laughs> this is a this is a lesion which you see by 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 Charles. Maybe maybe you don't see it. But here, this is a this is a abortion fracture. This is a motion fracture of the, of the condyle. This is a, the, the same as the ligamentum alarium fracture. This is not a, a severe lesion, but we see this, this lesion only by CT scan, not by conventional x ray. This is not a, an unstable, unstable lesion, but you can treat it easily conservatively. But remember, you have to look when you do a CT scan for chronic trauma, you have to look very carefully in the upper side of the spine. This is a lesion which is also easily overlooked. But look here. When you look, when you look to the distance between the ring and the lens, this is pathological. This is more than three millimeters of the rings. You have a, an a instability of the Atlanto axial joint. And you have to look carefully because this happens not very often. It's not a common, uh, common condition, but it can happen when you have to really look at it. This is treated by gully fusion and marble C1, C2 screwing as shown here. Fraction of the atlas. Fraction of the atlas, we have to, to understand the stable ones and the unstable ones. The stable ones, they don't have any uh, dislocation of the muscle lateralis in the front of you. You can treat them easily competitively. It's not a problem to, to give them a stiff collar for six to eight weeks. Not, not a problem in healing. But when you make a CT scan after eight or ten weeks, for example, you don't see any healing, but the fracture has healed. If you don't see the healing, it lasts a long time, maybe half a year, to see a fracture healing, for completely fracture healing in the CT scan. The unstable ones are difficult to treat operatively. In general, we use a hollow fixator for treating those patients, but you can, in some conditions, I never made a C1 internal fixator, but it might, it might be possible to do so. In some cases, you can treat them operatively. There is also a possibility to do an anti-locating via a counter row and I never did it either. But I, I did one operatively, this one, with a Jefferson tree fracture, which is dislocated. At the stretch, a young man, 18 years, I, I didn't want to give him uh, hollowness for, for uh, 12 weeks. Therefore, I tried to do a C1, C2, C2 model uh, fixation and I achieved. It's not, it's not the common, it's not the, the rule to do so, but in this patient, I want to, ha I want to, to, have, to have him with a collar only, not with a uh, uh, hollow fixator. 
This is not resolved in this way. That was talked about, uh, uh, about the dense fracture. I think the dense fracture is a problematic fracture in the old patient, not in the young patient. In the young patient, everything heals. There's a lot of problems if you use if you use one screw or two screws. This is not a problem. But the old patient is a problem. What is the diagnostic? Yeah, that's clear, but you have, to, you have to look also at the stability. It was pointed out by Yara Kurtz, E, also that you have stable and unstable dense structures. This one, this one is unstable, with the fracture line going from anterior to inferior to posterior superior. That's a really difficult fracture to treat. This is not a fracture that can easily be treated by anterior screwing. In my opinion, this is a fracture the best to do from posteriorly with a C1 and C2 screw. And this is maybe the reality. In conservative treatment, you have 35 to 85 percent of non-union in type 2 fracture, and in the operated cases, you have 10 to 35 to 40 percent of non-union, mainly your people. Risk factor, instability, displacement, angulation, age, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is the main part. Remember the, the, the CT scan which was shown by Yara Kills is a completely sclerotic dense, uh, dense, uh, apex of the dense. What are the treatment options? Type 1 to type 3, external immobilization with stiff collar, type 2, hollow wrist, minerva or surgical stabilization, type 2C, posterior autonomy stabilization, type 2A, 2B, posterior or anterior screwing. In the old patient, in the old patient, I prefer, nowadays, I prefer the posterior, that became posterior C1, C2 screwing. Why? It gives you after you, it's not a, it's not a big approach, it's not a big issue in this operation. The operation lasts about 80 to 85 minutes because you have to be very careful in, in placing your, your key wires because you have a lot of neurological structures and structures in place. But patient is absolutely pain-free after the operation. You can treat him with a soft collar without any problem. And the second point is very interesting which was pointed out by the old French guys also. The second point is fracture heals. The dense fracture heals with this treatment. Therefore, you could take out the screws afterwards, but we never did it. But the fracture heals with this type of method. This is the gold standard, anterior screwing. Here, an interoperative view. You need only a, a, a small incision for doing so. And here, this is a good case, a 60-year-old man with a type B fracture, an easy fracture, and did by one screw. Two screws, sometimes you don't have enough place for, for putting two screws. Maybe, maybe they say it may give you more rotational stability. That's, that's true. But sometimes it's difficult even to get one screw in. And therefore, in general, we use one screw. We use a percutaneous technique, but I personally don't like this, this cannulated screw. I prefer to use the conventional screw to rim up and then to put conventional screw. And here, you see, it's still a debate. You, you never know this has it has the fracture here or has it not. It doesn't look, it doesn't look healed. The patient was pain-free, therefore, therefore we consider the fracture healed. And here, and here the conventional X-ray. That's also a problem when, when they talk about solatrosis. Because in general, the, the diagnosis solatrosis is only, can only be done by CT scan, not by conventional X-ray. In my, in my experience. This is not a good reduction. You see it here? Here's the dance and here's the corpus. This will never heal. No way. There's no way that this will heal. The problem was the, 
the, the dance wasn't perforated by the reamer. And therefore, you, you don't have any compression of the dance to the corpus. That's was shown by uh, Jarek before. And you see they have, they have more or less 15 to 20 dense fracture uh, type 2 we tweak every year. But most of them are very old people. And you see here, we have a bit of change of concept. This was, this was in, the, in the 90s, in the beginning of this century, we did most, most we did one screw or two screws. And nowadays we change the concept. Nowadays, for the old people, we want to have a safe and a secure uh, a treatment and we use the C1, C2 screw fixation uh, shown by Margaret. And this is a treatment which allows uh, functional after fistular treatment with a soft call. And we, up to now, we have only one failure in this treatment. Uh, you see the difference in time? This needs a bit more sophisticated looking to the X-ray because you don't feel very comfortable when you do a percutaneous C1, T2, C2 screwing, and therefore I personally I feel a bit, a bit, I feel a bit afraid, and I need some time for having a good placement of my key wire. Here, this is the the direction of the key wire. It comes out here. It should comes out here. And normally when it comes out here, it perforates the the, the, the granule granular pedicle of C2, uh, normally. This is a, a good uh, screwing here, a percutaneous Margaret C1 T C2 screwing in dense fracture, type 2. I think that's a good method and uh, the, the, the functional deficit is not so high. They have, at least they have a, 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 a diminution of the rotation movement. But the, the flexion, extension, and side bending is really correct. This is an unstable uh, solar process, you can see. That's the problem. Sometimes it's really a problem to, to put the screw where it should be pushed. Yeah, because of the, the color, the, 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 the neck is somewhere and sometimes very short. And you can't, you can't go with the screw where you want to go. And this happens. And we did uh, a removal of the screws and did uh, a screwing by Marlo, as it's shown here. And this is also a technique uh, which is advised by Hans. And when I, when I read the paper, uh, written by Hans, said, oh, that's very easy. And, there is no problem at all in this technique, C1, C2, uh, internal fixator. That's not true. That's really not true. You have a big vein and you have your, 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 uh, your, your root, your C2 root, and it's really a lot of preparation. And in, in my opinion, it's sophisticated and highly, highly dangerous to, to do this technique. But this is more stable, clearly. This is more stable than the C1, C2 screw but it's much more complicated surgical. This is a seldom condition, uh, and uh, uh, a family 2 lesion to treat by uh, uh, GDA screwing. Uh, I consider this not stable enough. Nowadays I do, uh, I do the removal of the disc and I do an anterior plating and an anterior grafting from anterior. But this is, I, I did it once, but I, I don't consider this as, as a stable osteosynthesis. Uh, our actual concept for dense type 2 fracture, anterior screwing for young people and posterior C1 C2 screwing for older people and for unstable dense fracture. These are the operated cervical fracture C3 to C7. Uh, in the years from 93 when we started the, the clinic. Up till now you see we have not very much, we have about 20 to 30 in a year, but you have to, to look at those fractures. Even uh, the, most, the most difficult are those between C6 and TH1 because they are very often over. 
uh, as a rule, we, we treat those patients from anteriorly. We do a removal of the disc and we do a bone grafting and we do a plating. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the 90s we used a conventional plate and bicorpical screws. Nowadays we have angle-stable plates and we use only, we use only uh, one corpus screws. Sometimes you have to look really carefully and uh, sometimes uh, you don't you see it only in the CT scan. Sometimes you have a relaxation of the feather charge. And if you have this you should not you should not try to reduce this dislocated facet uh, um, let's say in the cold way. I I personally I personally prefer to do in those patients a 360 degree procedure. I remove this from anteriorly and then I try it, then I try it, then I have to remove this anteriorly. Because very often, you, very often you have a, uh, um, a collapse of the disc into the vertical camera, uh, into the spinal camera. And you have to remove this collapse before you do your reduction. And therefore I start doing anterior board, I remove the disc, and then I try to do intraoperatively a reduction from the anterior side. If I'm not able to do so, I close, I go around and then do an open, an open reduction, an open uh, uh, revision of the facet joint and then I go back and do my anterior fusion. Don't, don't try to do a close reduction. This is a problem you have to take in mind. This looks quite normal. But you see only C6. And this patient has a neurological symptoms. And when we did the MRI, we saw the problem. This ligament is injury C6, C7. But then you look, when you look carefully, when you look really carefully, you can see that this distance here is bigger than this distance here. And this could be helpful to look for these kind of injuries, but always try, always try to, to see all seven cervical spine uh, spine bones. This is absolutely mandatory. This is uh, a problem with the vector rotation. We had we have fixed it, and you see it was fixed in the wrong in the wrong. Uh, reduction. He was thinking. He was thinking. Okay, I have to fix it in this in this position. But this is <coughs> like that, and we have to fix it in this position. And he had a neurological problem afterwards, and we did the revision, and the revision also failed, and then we had to do it again, and. Hans Zwick uh, advised me to do it from posterior. But this is, this is really demanding to do it from posterior. This is really demanding to do a vector rotation in this, with this uh, uh, cervical span from dorsally, that's really demanding. Therefore, we decided to use a long blade, an anchor stable blade, and try to fix it only from anterior. It's it's not, it's not so stable, but sometimes, uh, in, in, in our experience for the moment, to up and to down the dislocation are mostly enough, uh, enough stable for treating those patients. <coughs> Another patient, 43 years male, car accident, complete horizontal instability C7, TH1, complete paraplegic syndrome C7. He was stabilized C7. Uh, TH1 elsewhere, but I, I was, uh, the patient was shown to me, and uh, his main problem was he couldn't, he couldn't look straight forward. He was unable to look straight forward. I said, OK, 
okay, let's make a CT scan. And they made a CT scan, and this was the CT scan. They had a dislocation in the, in the, in the area, and then I did, this is a, a bad X-ray, but a uh, bad CT scan, but I did this in the beginning of the 90s, it was really the, the fact the uh, well, is not so good, but you see, I did the 360 procedure, and it, it doesn't help him, because he was the great check in the beginning, but now he, could, now he can look straight forward. Okay, conclusion, no convincing concept for treating unstable fracture of the atlas. The instabilities in C1, C2 are seldom. A lot of complications while treating dense type 2 fracture, that means a lot of chronoclosis in the old patients. Fractures of the middle or lower cervical spine are not really a problem. Fractures dislocation of the cervical shoulder and junction sometimes overlook. Keep this in mind. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your uh, interesting lecture. Uh, just, uh